This is the problem I have with Marcus Rogers. He picks and chooses what he wants to preach, you know, and he doesn't, things that don't fit his ideology, he just leaves out. Like he literally is against, you know, LGBTQ. He lets it known. He thinks that a man should not lie with a man and a woman should not lie with a woman. And I totally am for that. But you can't just pick and choose you're literally eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thinking that you can pick and choose what laws and what commandments to go by and what laws and commandments no longer to go by. Nowhere does Jesus tell you not to, um, for a man not to lay with the other man, but he does tell you to keep the law. He even says that when they sit in Moses each and teach the law to observe and do everything that they're telling you to observe and do, but not to do as they do, because although they're reading it, they're not keeping it. He also warned of the leaven, of the teachings of the Pharisees. We know Paul brought this leaven into the Bible. We know Paul taught the leaven. That, and what all that means is he was a Pharisee and he brought leaven in his teaching. He said, we're no longer under the law, but under grace. But that's not at all what Jesus said. Jesus, when the man asked Jesus in Luke, um, how do I have eternal life? What did he say? He said, do you know the law? And then he made a really good statement after that. How do you read it? Because over and over again, he warned us of the scribes. The scribes were the ones that translated the Bible and the ones that gave us a lot of our definitions with both. They mistranslated the Bible and they corrupted a lot of our definitions. And this is really easy to research. Even they would translate scribes and the teachers of the law over and over again. They wanted to discredit the law because they were serving devils. And so long as a person stops obeying the covenant of God, his instruction, which is the Torah, his law, then now they are they can easily be yoked to these devils and that's how they make money off us and keep us bound. He didn't want us to be set free. That's why he told you to obey the laws of the land, but to nullify the law of God and say we were under grace. So can you answer me one question, Marcus? If we are no longer under the law of God, then why does it matter if a man lays with a man and a woman with a woman? Oh, it might not profit them. They might not be able to have kids. But why would that matter? Why do you get to pick and choose which laws and which commandments we go by? Yes, you ask yourself for fear of the atonement sacrifice. But he said, I did not come to do away with not the any of the commandments and to do and teach even the least of the commandments. He even said that they were going to be preaching about tithing, mint, and coming. But yet they were going to leave out the 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 weightier matters of the law. They were going to leave out the love of God. This is why when Paul said the whole law is in one word to love your neighbor, he totally left out the love of God. Literally every single warning fit Paul. He was the he was a Pharisee. He never denounced being a Pharisee. Even in his road to Damascus, um conversion story afterwards, after that happened, when he went on trial and had the chance to say, I am no longer a Pharisee. I know go, I now go by the law of God. He never said that. In fact, he said the only reason he taught the law of God was to win those over, that he himself was not under the law of God, but under this new law of Christ. That was the false Christ that Yahshua warned us, the antichrist, the one he said was going to come in his name and deceive many, even the elect if possible, because he was talking about his elected apostles, which were all most deceived. They were all literally prophesied to go to astray, but he brought them all back and they prophesied against him. That's why he, John tells you though, they went out from us. They were never of us. That's why they left to made it known that they were never of us. That's why in Acts 1, he it tells you the qualifications to be an apostle. Paul never saw Yasha on the road to Damascus. I, he probably saw the devil. That's why his right eye was blinded. In Zechariah eleven seventeen, it says that he was going to blind the, the worthless shepherd's right eye. 
and he was going to desert the flock. All this happened. That's why Paul was bragging that they would gouge out their eye for him if they could, if possible. That's why he was writing in such big letters. That's um, literally Usher said that um, although they taught, they did not. This is why Paul said all things were lawful for him. The same theology as Aleister Crowley. He believed the same thing. He, that means sucking dick is lawful for him. Let's just be for real. That means aborting babies is lawful for him. No, he picked and choose what he wanted to do. That is eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thinking that you are righteous in your own eyes and depending on your own understanding and not depending on the word of God. You're not depending on the tree of life. If you really research the living waters, the word of God, his instructions is the living waters. And he said that um, the the mother, the mother that is spoken of in Proverbs and all through the Bible is the law of God. But he, who did he call the mother of harlots? He said the mother and harlots was going to make everyone drink of her abominations. That is the law that, that Paul taught. That is the law that Muhammad taught taught. That is the law of the antichrist, those that are not going according to the law of God. Yes, he fulfilled the atonement sacrifice. And no, we're not sacrificing today. And the only ones that were allowed to sacrifice was was the high priest Aaron. So it's not even according to the law, unless you're the high priest Aaron or God chose another. And I don't know if we'll ever have that again. I'm not all knowing, but I do know we're supposed to go according to the law of God. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that is because I have to learn myself because the guides and the teachers and the false prophets of today are the ones leading the world astray. And that's the problem I have with you, Marcus. You have two masters. Paul, Paul, Yasha said, do not have but one master, but you have two. Paul himself told you he is not mastered by anyone. Go look up that word in Greek. It means anyone. The scribe sugarcoated his things. They added his words. They wanted you to nullify the word of God and to go according to the false covenant. That is why you cannot mix the, the real covenant with the false covenant. It will burst. You don't know what you're doing, Marcus. You have not sought out the truth. Yasher said the truth was like a hidden buried treasure. He said that you had to seek it. He said that the scribes and Pharisees hid it from us. He said the ones that would that they were willing to travel land and sea to win a single convert and make them twice the child of hell as themselves. Who traveled land and sea to win? Go look up Paul. He told you what he did. He he told you he was given the thorn in his side, the messenger of Satan to torment him because he was a weed, a tear. And you, if you eat his words and if you drink of what he said, then you're drinking of the mother of harlots. Do your research, brother. Paul, my dad followed Paul and he literally, literally shot his brains out. Paul leads to destruction. People need to stop following Paul. Paul does not give you a sound mind. He does not give you peace. He does not lead you into this perfect peace no matter what's happening to you. Paul makes people blow their brains out. I know this firsthand. Stop following Paul.